If you're a marketer and still using ChatGPT like this, simple prompts and then copy pasting the outputs to whatever you want to use it for, then you are already getting left behind. But don't worry, today I'm showing you a tool, GenSpark.ai, that I discovered that's an AI agent that replaces everything you're doing with ChatGPT and makes it way more powerful. So for example, right now it's doing research on the same topic that I'm talking to you about today, GenSpark versus ChatGPT, and it's also creating presentation slides for me. So as you can see, it's already in work and this is looking really impressive just based on one prompt. But of course, my prompt is pretty advanced. I told it to help me create a YouTube video about GenSpark and how it should be the go-to tool for marketers instead of ChatGPT. And I also told it to help me with the script writing and to do the presentation that addresses all of the main questions and all of the objections that somebody might have. So I'm not following the script it gives me. Instead, I'm just riffing as I go. So bear with me. But basically, just based on this example, it's already giving me a really good title. Stop using ChatGPT like a beginner. Why GenSpark is the marketing AI tool you're missing out on? Because I definitely believe this is true. Then, then there's the hook or the intro. I'm not following this right now, as you can see. And then the main content framework as well, problem statement. Most marketers use ChatGPT inefficiently for one of tasks. Then comparison, ChatGPT versus GenSpark's key differences. Then number one benefit, multiple agents are working simultaneously with GenSpark. Why? With ChatGPT, you can only do one interaction at a time. And GenSpark also has some workflow automation capabilities and also real-time data collection from multiple sources. And then I'm going to show some demos and addressing your objections, which might be cost. Both ChatGPT's paid plan and GenSpark, I think, are close to 20 or $25 per month. Not that much if you're taking into account how much time Time, it can save you. Learning curve is actually pretty easy to understand. It has the similar chat window, but it's more capable and able to do more tasks. And data security, I haven't looked that much into it, but again, like with any AI tool, don't put any sensitive information into it. So yeah, right now you can see it has been working on this slide deck for a while now and it keeps working. So this looks really impressive. I wish I would have waited for it to finish and maybe done a video while using these slides, but whatever, I'll show you how to use it. So basically in GenSpark, it looks like this. I have the paid plan, but you can also get some free credits at first so you can check it out beforehand. So I can use this super agent chat here and here I can use whatever I want to do, but there are also these specific chat interfaces on the side menu here. For example, the AI slides, this is the one that creates those really cool slides. And since that generation is ongoing, I'm not going to trigger this again, but this is really powerful. And I think this is one of the best tools out there that's doing this right now. So if you are using slide decks a lot and you need information to be really accurate, you need it to look nice and to generate it quickly, then definitely this is the tool for you right now. I'm really impressed with this feature. Then another feature is AI Sheets, and this is really cool. I thought I don't need to use it, but actually let me show you how I used it before. So because GenSpark is an AI agent and not just an AI chatbot like ChatGPT here that gives you whatever you ask for it. For example, I asked to write the LinkedIn post with AI News, so it went to the internet and it wrote me a LinkedIn post. But that's pretty much the main thing it does. Of course, I can use the deep research, I can create images and stuff like that, but GenSpark Spark is so much more powerful and the slides feature is one of the main things why I would start using it and another is this AI sheets. So for example, since all of these tasks take a little bit of time, I'm not going to do it live, but I'm going to show you what I did here. So I asked it to find all the YouTube videos of Annika Elendi, me, and list them based on metrics. So that's how I got this table. So basically it went and checked who is Annika Elendi, how to find her on YouTube. Then it went through all of my YouTube videos and it put all of this data here in this sheet. The URLs, the video links, uh, upload date. So this is just based on this small, simple prompt. So this is really impressive. But then after that, I started playing around with it. So here is my other prompt. 
I ask you to analyze why are the most successful ones and offer new YouTube video ideas for me. And then it came up with another sheet and here it gave ideas for video titles, target niche problems, key for content focus, value proposition and so on. So I feel like this is super, super powerful in creating lots of research and then I can export this as a CSV file as well. So I can start using it in Google Sheets or in Airtable or wherever. So I'm definitely going to use this a bit more in the future, but for now it was really cool. And also they have these different ways to re-trigger or reuse same data. For example, let's take this video idea and then there's an option to fact check content. So it creates a new prompt and it then goes to internet and fact checks it. So this is a really cool feature that is right in there. And now it did the fact checking and it's pretty good. I can also do the visualization here. So it creates another prompt. So I think the user experience is pretty good here. And it's actually useful for marketers and entrepreneurs and whoever is using this type of tool. And now it's using the image generation features here. And I have to be honest, you can do this in ChatGPT as well and with other tools. But even though the models have become so much better, I wouldn't recommend using AI images that much in your content if you want to build trust and you definitely want to build trust when you're doing marketing. So it's a cool thing to have maybe for internal documents or something like that where you use AI images. But overall, I see very few use cases in real life that I'm actually using every day. It might change in the future, but for now, it seems like to get one solid image out of AI image generation, I have to re-prompt it so many times and it's never perfect and it's so much easier to just take your phone and take a picture or video of yourself yeah, instead. And right now the tool is generating the image. At the same time, I can show you the other features here. The image studio is a separate menu item here as well. It shows you some really popular use cases. You can do the background remover here, which is a really cool thing to do. But I'm usually using Canva for this since I'm using Canva for a lot of stuff. And also this is just like one click background remover. So if it's not perfect, then there are no options to edit it. But in Canva, where you can be really precise with it and some other options as well. So you can check this out. And a cool option is also to generate videos from prompts here. You can also do them from images. And I actually tried it out. So I'll show you one example where I used it. And again, with the photos and AI generated videos, it's not really that trustworthy. So think about it if you want to use it. So basically, this is my image that I used. And I said, make this person move and talk. The first one failed. The second one moves and talks, but not like me. These other ones also pretty impressive how they talk or smile, but it's not me. So I don't know what the use case would be. So it's just like cool thing to cover for this video, but in real life, in marketing, in practical use cases, not much use. So let's go back to the first chat that I had open here. So now it has finished the creating the slides for me so I can open them up. And as you can see, I can now go edit in AI slides. So this is the menu item here. So it opens up a new tab and now I have all of these files here and I can select to edit like specific things. So I can change the whole font size or whatever text I don't like. So this is pretty cool. So I don't have to re-prompt it. And what usually happens with other tools is I want to prompt a little change and it changes everything else as well. So I have to do three other prompts and like yada, yada, yada. So this is how it looks like and I can also view it separately and export it. This is a really cool thing. So I can play the slides directly here or export to PDF or the PPTX version. And there's also an option to edit in Canva and Figma, which is pretty cool. But it seems like I have to do some specific, oh yeah, it says I need to transport to PDF, whatever. I don't know how to use it. Anyway, so it looks pretty impressive. All of the information I gave it. So basically I wanted to use these slides as a background for my YouTube video, which I didn't end up using, but at least you can see my workflow. And here it gives ChatGPT versus ChenSpark key capabilities. And yeah, it's pretty accurate. It's done its research. It took its time as well. Creating this type of thing took, I think, 10 minutes or more, which in AI era is eternity. So benefit number one, multiple AI agents working simultaneously. As you saw, I had one agent do the slide deck and in other tabs, I could have other prompts doing some other stuff. So this is really powerful. And also it has many ways to use it for research as well. Okay, so these are the slides that are the most impressive. These are the sheets where it collected data from actually scraping internet. So this is again, super impressive. And there's one more thing that is really cool that I like it here. 
They have this thing called AI Drive, which is a really good move from them because people know Google Drive already. So you can understand like, oh, this is where my files go. And what's really cool is that I can upload files here, but I can also say it to download files from the internet. So basically what I did, I asked it to go and check my YouTube page and download the latest 10 YouTube thumbnails that I have uploaded. And it actually did that. It created the folder and all of these YouTube thumbnails are now here. And this is really cool because now I can go and, I don't know, do competitor research, ask GenSpark to go and check all of my competitors' web pages, get their pricing information, get their product images if I want to use them in blog posts or something like that. So this is super powerful. And another thing that's really cool, once you create your account, then there is this option for personalization here. And I have this already filled out, but how I filled it out is you can do this auto research. So here I put my LinkedIn profile, I put my YouTube link, I put my homepage, and then it creates your profile that it always uses when you're doing any type of tasks here. So this is really a big time saver. And also down here, there's custom instructions that I can use. And I use my content humanizing prompt that you can get from AIMarketingMasters.com. If you are a member, this is something I'm using all the time when I need to get the human sounding outputs. So get it from here, along with other automation blueprints and templates. So these are super valuable. So check it out. But back to GenSpark. So once you have this personal profile set up, it's always using this with whatever you are doing. And I'll show you some additional things that you can do with this that I'm not using that much. But here in all agents tab, you can also see there's a call for me type of thing that you can do. So basically it says the popular task is book a table at some restaurant or something. So this only works with the US and Canadian and Japanese numbers. But again, letting AI call or do anything for me when trust or connection is needed, I'm not really subscribing to that idea, so I'm not using it. But if this workflow is useful for you, then check it out. So yeah, I think it's now time to get rid of ChatGPT if this is your only use case and upgrade to GenSpark because this is going to upgrade your AI game so much. So check out the next video and see you next week. Bye!